Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious? Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of a uh, lysip uh, something, or, or Lear Pontus, or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. And I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps twenty minutes before ten o'clock. Then about ten minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at ten minutes past ten. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh my God. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. We can see the interior of the Colonial Collection Room from this window. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. A master's degree diploma. It belongs to Martin Hamish. An award presented to Martin Hamish for best grower of the year.
the seeds of plant species are stored here. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. You say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Well, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. Thank you, miss. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear.
When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiments on the ventilation system. Water lily greenhouse. According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. First of all, I need to visit the colonial collection room to see how those caterpillars dropped onto the deadly plants. Here it is. Cylinder records.
These plants, classified as shrubs or grasses, have adapted to their arid environment due to a system of underground roots. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes.
The power is on. The engine has stopped. The ventilation system is working. Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. It works perfectly, Holmes. Bravo. Now if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out. By activating both Albert's and Mr. Hamish's fans. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the Colonial Collection Room. Let's go to Scotland Yard.
Inspector, I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it! I'll send the lads around to arrest him. Very good. I shall wait to hear from you. Inspector, I came here as quickly as I could. Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. Seed house. Dry Tropic. Holmes, my God! Yes, we found him like that. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. 
This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the Colonial Collection Room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. I have another idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Let us analyze the facts and statements so that we may recreate the events of that morning.
Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room, which is quite enough time. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door, more than enough time. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. <laughs> 